So let's react to Warren Gatland's final Welsh selection for the Italy game there at home. It's the so-called wooden spoon decider, although is it only a wooden spoon if you win zero games? That's a good debate. And also George North has announced his retirement from internationals. That's pretty big news as well. So welcome to this video supported by Lifting Giants. Let's talk about George North first of all, because I think in the short term, it is another hammer blow for Wales because he's got lots of good rugby left in him. But why now? It's a good question. Was this his plan all along? Well, it could have been because he is moving to France, to the second division of France. So maybe it was his plan all along. He's got lots of miles on the clock, probably more than other 31 year olds because he's been playing international rugby since the age of 18, plus lots of British and Irish Lions tours. So he's got plenty of wear and tear. Maybe he just wants to wind down a little bit and focus on his club rugby anyway. Was he also maybe a bit annoyed that he was dropped for that France game? I mean, probably. I wondered if Warren Gatlin was just rotating centres to get centres game time, but many suggested it might have been a tactical thing to get Joe Roberts kicking on. Either way, it seemed a strange decision, especially when both centres are back in this time. Anyway, George North as well. Could he be thinking about the Lions? And if he goes to France, of course, Prodi Deux, he's less likely to be picked for the Lions, but he could still be picked for the Lions. I mean, you look at the competition for 13 in the Lions uh, places. Well, Gary Ringrose, Hugh Jones, maybe they're front runners, but he'd have a great chance with his experience, with his size and power. Um, it looks like that's not going to happen, or that it could, but I doubt it. Or did Warren Gatland come to him and say, look, I know you still want to play for Wales, but I'm not going to pick you if you're playing in the second division of France. It's just not a strong enough league. That's possible, but whatever it is, Good luck to him. He's been absolutely amazing for Wales. A shame we can't see him in a Welsh shirt anymore because he's been so good. And he finished off in that World Cup with probably his best form in that 13 shirt ever. So well done to him. You know, we wish him good luck, of course. So let's get into the team against Italy. Yes, and in the centres, both Tompkins and North return as a pair. I think they're going to want to prove a point as well because being swapped out wholesale for two new centres, Watkin and Joe Roberts, was pretty hard to take. Plus, of course, they lost the game. So let's see if they can make a difference. I think they will because I think they are Wales' best centres, very experienced as well. And again, against France, the other odd selection, I guess, for Gatland was Daffod Jenkins, the second row captain, being moved to the blind side. They were probably trying to beef up the pack, but I'm not sure it really works that well. There is a real blind side this time with young Alex Mann, although he is very young. The Italian back row of Negri, Lamaro and Vincent, which I assume it will be, is very quick and their pack isn't the biggest. So maybe going for speed and athleticism is the best way to go. But another strange selection, dropping Will Rowland down to the bench, who I thought was the best second row against France and probably is the best of the three second rows, I think. Beard has been okay, he's good in the mall, but not particularly dynamic. And of course, Jenkins is very young, so on pure ability, I'll probably select Rollins ahead of them. But Beard, like I said, is vital to the line out, and Daffer Jenkins has been named the captain, so is that why he's in? Let me know if you think that's a bad call not to start with Rollins. We also see Dylan Lewis come in and start at tighthead. Azarati is out completely. Probably worth having a look at the young Harry O'Connor, 23, former Wales under 20s. But that entire front row coming on has only got a handful of caps amongst it. So it seems a little bit risky there. But again, Gatland may be just trying to get game time in the squad. Now a word for the sponsor, Lifting Giants. Will Rowland's on the bench. He wears these lifting blocks that have been proven to improve line-out lifting quality. They're a brand new thing coming in just before the World Cup. If you want to get your hands on a pair, it's 20% off until the end of the championship. Use the code RUGBYANALYST20 and the links are in the description below. The two standout forwards in this competition so far, I think, have been Tommy Raphael and Aaron Wainwright, who's actually nearly on 50 caps, which has really crept up on me. But he's been really, really consistent, really good, and I'm sure he's going to be a regular starter from now on. The rest of the pack, I'm not sure it's the strongest Welsh pack we have seen, but like I said, it's not the biggest Italian pack either, so more about speed and skill, maybe. In other places, intriguing that the charm life of Josh Adams continues. He's been pretty average, and that's been maybe quite nice, all championship. And poor old Mason Grady has been just living in that number 23 shirt on the bench, and surely there's more to gain from starting him, so I don't get that one. 
Let me know if you agree or if you think Adams deserves to carry on. Now, it's a bit harsh, but it has to be said that the arrival of the Welsh substitutes in the France game coincided with Wales going from a winning position to a record loss against France. Indeed, Gareth Davis has been axed completely in favour of Hardy coming back in. And I did say I thought it was weird that Hardy was dropped from the French game completely because he was so good in round three. So that was a bit strange, but he's back. Yoan Lloyd retains his place on the bench to cover 10, and he is clearly very talented and exciting, but he does get impulsive. He is reckless. He was that against France, not really what they needed at that point. But there's not really many other options in the squad. Kai Evans is there in the squad. He's got a good boot on him, but he would exactly call him a proven fly half, so maybe not the best options at the moment till the likes of Ants can come back. Uh, we see what Patchell's been doing over in New Zealand. They could do with some of those tens coming back, I guess. Anyway, Gatland, he's made a lot of bold calls in this Six Nations and some odd ones and a few more odd ones in this selection. Let me know if you like this selection. Now, of course, there's a lot on the line for both teams here, but maybe more pressure on Wales because they could still win the match and finish last in the championship if they win without a bonus point, a try bonus point, or they win without getting enough points difference, they could still be last in the whole competition. Italy's performance against Scotland was super exciting. It's a really hard game to call. Wales have the home advantage, which might help, but it could be a nail biter and it could be the match of the round. So I'm excited to see this one. Let me know what you think, Welsh fans, of this selections, all the comments below, and I'll catch you next time.